have been talking about the Holy Spirit. And I'm in your papa book on our Bible Zenu. That's being exciting. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are excited that you have given us this very wonderful time. We are excited, Father, Lord, your King of all glory, that you have given us the grace to speak to the nations about your power. We know that we will not be here without the help of the Holy Spirit. So we pray that we receive this gift that you left us with so that we are able to continue with the ministry and the work of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, are you excited? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm also very excited. The Lord has been good to me. Uh, I'm telling of his goodness. And I believe that his power is here present so that we can continue enjoying in his presence. The Bible says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. So we receive the Holy Spirit power when the Holy Spirit come upon us. And I think it is very important to always remember that. But the reason why he come upon us is so that we may serve God. And therefore he says, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem. We don't receive the Holy Spirit just to feel good. We receive the Holy Spirit so that we can go about witnessing about our Lord Jesus Christ. And indeed we witness with our mouth, but also we also witness with our, wife, with our lives. Hallelujah. We know that Jesus Christ did not start his ministry until he received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he talked about the Holy Spirit to his disciples and he told them, I'm not going to leave you as orphans, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and he's going to help you. So he's a promise of God. The church cannot function without the Holy Spirit. The church without the Holy Spirit is therefore a dead church. Hallelujah. So it's very important that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is very important, therefore, to learn to wait on the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what we have been doing every morning as we talk and as we pray. That's what we were doing as we worship this morning. And we believe that when we worship like that, the atmosphere changes. We are not, this place is not the way we met it. <laughs> and because the Lord dwelt in the midst of his praises. Amen. We looked at Luke chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 4 again, and we saw how Jesus' ministry was influenced by the Holy Spirit. Today, I want us to look at how believers' life is influenced by the gift of the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do in a believer's life? Look at uh, 1 Corinthians. I will read verse chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. What does the Holy Spirit do in a believer's life? First Corinthians 6, verse 19 says, let me start by verse 18. Free from sexual immorality, all other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is that he indwells a believer. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We must always remember that and understand it. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, 
when we are taking care of our bodies, we are actually taking care of the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he goes further and says, you are not your own. So you belong to God. It's good to look at your house and remind your house that you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's good to look at yourself and remember that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The other thing the Holy Spirit does to a believer is that he seals the believer. He locked up to protect the believer. Look at Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, verse 13. I will read from verse 11. In whom we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were first to put our hope in Christ must, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possessions to the praise of his glory. Two points we find here. One is that the Holy Spirit seals us. In other words, the Holy Spirit protects us until the coming back of our Lord Jesus Christ. To me, that is very powerful. So we are protected by the Holy Spirit. Paul says somewhere else that do not let anybody uh, bother you because you bear on yourself the mark of Jesus Christ. What is the mark of Jesus Christ? It is the Holy Spirit. So I want you to be very conscious of one thing that you have the Holy Spirit in you. Every time, actually, that's why Paul later says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. He is so much part of you such that he can be grieved. And I'm reminding you, he, because he's a person, he can be grieved. When we are praying the Lord's Prayer, we are, no, the, 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 the words of grace, when we say the words of grace, we say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. And what? The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper, but the Holy Spirit also is the one we fellowship with. I don't know when you last fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But when we are talking about it, we say there is what we call what? The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And Paul, when he was speaking his last words to every uh, church that he wrote to, he told them, maintain the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, and he also had said that you can grieve the Holy Spirit. Because it's very easy. Hallelujah. So you should remember that you should have the fellowship of who? The Holy Spirit. So you have been sealed with the mark of the Holy Spirit. But then, and this is so amazing if you think about it, the fact that you have the Holy Spirit is your guarantee. I want to read verse uh, 14 again. Who is a deposit? Unajua wakati ninaenda kwa duka, and I want to buy a phone, or I want to buy a car, or I want to buy a lot. I'm told that so that you can show your commitment, you must give a deposit so that we can be sure you are going to come and buy. And then you are told you can pay the rest within 90 days. Some people say, give us a deposit of 30%. That is a huge deposit to show your commitment. Now, how does God show his commitment to us as believers? He has given us a deposit. As a guarantee. Hallelujah. The only way you are so sure that you are going to heaven is that you have a deposit. 
The Bible says, who is a deposit guarantee our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possessed to the praise of his glory. Why does the, the, the believer need the Holy, the Holy Spirit? That is why I can remain zealous. I was born again many years ago, more than 30 years ago, I gave my life to Christ. I have a guarantee. I'm still on fire. I'm still passionate about the gospel because I have the Holy Spirit as my guarantee. He, he, he reassures me that this journey and my labor in the Lord is not in vain. Isn't that what The guarantee of the Holy Spirit. And it's good to keep checking, do you have the fellowship with the Holy Spirit? The other point about the, what the Holy Spirit does to a believer is that he adopts a believer. Second Timothy. I want you to go there so that you can see it. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. He adopts. A believer. Verse 19 says, let me start by, uh, uh, I always like to start further. So I will start verse 16. Avoid Godless chatter because those who indulge in it become more and more ungodly. <laughs> it's very interesting to think about it that what you keep saying is what you become. If you are, with, you, are, you, are, you are involved in a godless conversation, then you become more and more ungodly. It tells you, if you are involved in a godless conversation, then you become more and more godly. I want to listen to your conversations. Or maybe I want you to keep listening to yourself. If you are involved in a political conversation, you become more and more political. You become more and more like what you are involved in sharing. What is in your conversation? If you, if you get involved in hateful conversation, you become a hater. And therefore it's very important to know what kind of conversations are you involved in. There is an impartation that happens to an individual as they talk. Because as they talk, they are opening their heart to be filled with what they are hearing. Very, very important. Their teaching will spread like uh, gunland. Among them are Hemias and Philetus, who have departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Powerful. Again, what are you listening to? These are two people, Hemias and Philetus, they are talking. And what are they saying? They are saying that the resurrection has already taken place. And in so doing, what do they do? They destroy the faith of many. These are people that are in the church. These are people that are giving a talk in the church. These are people that are talking to you. And that's why it's very careful to rock, to block your ears from anything that can destroy your faith. Hallelujah. I remember when I was in college, I went to a very liberal college, St. Paul's University, uh, then it was St. Paul's uh, Theological College. It's a very liberal. So they allow any kind of conversation. But and I do remember there was this young man who came to the, cha to the, to the chapel. Every morning we would have morning prayers in the chapel for about an hour. And People will talk. And this young man was given an opportunity. He had just joined the college. He was given an opportunity to, uh, to, to pray. And when he prayed, the whole chapel kept quiet. It, the prayer was so powerful. The guy was full of power and the Holy Spirit. But then he happened to, we, we happened to have a teacher who did not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we're talking about that today. He was teaching student of theology. He's a, a liberal, he was, uh, but he didn't believe. And what he did is that after that, he was the one to go and teach their class. 
And he told the young man, young man, you have just come. Yo imaniako, I would want you to, I want to meet you four years after now to see if you'll be praying the way you have prayed. And true to, the, to, to his word, four years later, he was not praying the way. He actually, he was almost vaccinated. He became a target. The things you reasoned. And let me say, you know, hearing and reasoning is are two different things. What you, you, you hear comes to your ears and go to your brain and you can shift it and reject it from your life. But what you reason to go to your heart and it becomes a part and parcel of your faith. Hallelujah. Are we together now? And therefore, God is saying that depart. These people who have departed from truth, don't reason to them. Don't follow what they are saying. It's very important, therefore, to know that the things that you are hearing can change your life completely, can transform your life completely. And that's what we seek to do every time we are starting to preach the gospel. Are we together now? And we are told by what they are saying, they have destroyed the faith of some. We want to declare today that your faith will not be destroyed by what you hear. Because you not reason to what you hear. Hallelujah. Amen. Teachings therefore are very important. Knowing what you are learning, knowing what is the theology of your pastor, it becomes very, very important in life. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with the, this inscription, the Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Hallelujah. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. We are here. But it's a super sad. And we are different kinds of vessels. Some of us are gold, others are silver, others are clay, and others are wood. It's up to us to think of what kind of a vessel am I. And he says, he continues saying, some are for special purposes, and others are for common use. So even the function of the vessels is very well defined. Then he continues to say, those who cleanse themselves, there is a process, and this is personal process, and we cleanse ourselves by washings of the, washing of the word. As we listen to the word of God, we become clean. That is why we are spending time every morning on Sunday to, to, uh, to, to indulge in the word of God. Because the Bible says, those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instrument for special purposes. Made holy, useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that what we are doing right now is that we are preparing to, you, you to do any good any good work. Hallelujah. Amen. There are people who are for special purposes, others are for common use. But there are those when they are prepared, again, by cleansing, Nikuoshua too, they will be used for good work. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is to adopt a believer. It is to, the work of the Holy Spirit is to cleanse a believer. The work of the Holy Spirit is to sanctify the believer. Of course, we know that the Holy Spirit therefore fills the believer. We know Acts chapter 2, look at it, and please after this always go and look at what we have studied because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The best way that learning takes place is through repetition. Anything that you hear here and you don't go and meditate on it. Meditation is thinking and thinking and thinking over and over again about something. You end up losing it and it it does not, it's like food that is not digested. And the work of the enemy is to seal the seed that is not attended well. Acts chapter 2, verses 4. 
All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So the work of the Holy Spirit is to fill a believer. I want to continue saying this, that church cannot work without the Holy Spirit. A church without the Holy Spirit is a dead church. Because it's, the, the, the Bible called the Holy Spirit the life-giving spirit. <laughs> I was talking to a lady uh, the other day and she told me, Pastor, mimi siyadagi kanisa siku hizi, nimechoka kuigia na shida zagu na kutoka nazo. Because they never got a chance to be ministered to by the Holy Spirit. As a church, our families come to me, all of you who are tired of carrying heavy roots, and I will give you rest. It is God talking. And when the Holy Spirit is present, there is nobody who will drive this place with their needs. Hallelujah. I believe when we give people time to just open their hearts to God and start, uh, and start praying, their burdens are being lifted away. Because when we come here, we come to the cross of Jesus Christ. And burdens are lifted at Calvary. That must be effected in Jesus' name. Are you together now? It's also good to know that the Holy Spirit is the author of the scriptures. You can see that again. You go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm, I'm really going back to the, to the hard copy uh, for, for my own good reason. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I want to read verse 16, says. And start by reading verse 14. But as you know, continue with what you have learned. Very important. I want you to underline, you must learn to continue with what you have learned. I don't know what you have run, but Paul is telling Timothy, there is something that you have already run, and I want you to continue with what you have run. There are some of us who does not have anything to continue with because they have not run anything. Very important to understand why we are having these sessions. Continue, but as for you, continue with what you have run and have become convinced of. Because you know those who, uh, whom you have, whom you have run. Number two, to note as you run is to know your teachers well. There are things that people are learning that the teacher is questionable. Our teacher is the Holy Spirit, and our teacher is the Scriptures. Hallelujah. So we need to know who are you running from. There are people who are running from traditionists. So they want to continue with something that is not going to benefit their life at all. But Paul, talking to his son in faith, Timothy, he told him, continue with what you have run. And then he become convinced about what you have run. Conviction is very important. The reason why we are having people not following the way of the cross is because of lack of conviction. Lack of conviction comes when the conscience is dead. Such that somebody will be doing wrong and they are not convinced. They, they, their conscience is dead. So the, their conscience does not judge them. But Paul is telling Timothy that you must have a conviction. A conviction becomes a driving force to an individual. And it's very important for us to ask, what is your conviction. What is your conviction? Bible continues saying, I'm reading verse 15 now, and how from infancy, this was a very lucky guy that had people who were talking to them the word of God even when they were infants. <laughs> oh mothers, what a privilege you have to talk to the word, of, the word of God to a baby when they are suffering. Infancy, imagine. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? How from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures and what are the Holy Scriptures able to do to you? The Holy Scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. 
without scriptures, you cannot be wise for salvation. Very important to understand that you start with receiving knowledge. You start with information. We say that information is power. But then after, if you, can, if you receive information and you do not understand it, that information is not useful. So there are a lot of people who have received information, but they have not internalized it. They have not conceptualized it. They have not understood what they have said. The Ethiopian eunuch, when Philip was sent to him by the Holy Spirit, the guy was reading the scriptures. The Bible says he was actually reading from the book of Isaiah. And the first thing that Philip asked the Ethiopian eunuch was, do you understand what you are reading? So after getting the information, the next stage is for you to understand what you are reading. And the Bible says in Psalms, do not like a moon that lacks understanding. Beasts do not have understanding. And if there's something that we really need to pray for ourselves and our children, the people we are ministering to, is that people will understand. I'll never forget this time I was sent to preach in one of the high schools. I was young. And I stood before them and I was speaking jargons. You know, when you want to prove that you are a good preacher by speaking big English. So I was really, really, really speaking big jargons. And in the middle of the summer, everybody was staring at me the way you are, but they were not understanding anything. I asked them, are you getting what I'm saying? They were honest. They said no. I had to go back to where I started and try to break it down more. Very, very important. The reason why it becomes difficult even to read and enjoy scriptures is because you do not understand. We need understanding. It is that understanding, with that understanding then, we start applying the word of God. Hallelujah. Applying the word of God is what wisdom is. Bible says, he who hears the word of God and does not do the way the word of God says, is like a foolish person who does not apply it. And the person who applies the word of God is the, the wise man who built his house on the, on the solid foundation. Understand this. If you do not apply the word of God, the Bible calls you a fool. You must have known it. You might have understood it. But if you do not apply it, it is useless. Hallelujah. I pray that from today, you will take it into the greatest consideration. Not just to hear the word of God, but also to understand it and to apply it. And every day, you should come out of a sermon thinking, what do I need to apply as far as what I have heard today is concerned? Otherwise, a lot of people leave churches with, uh, with empty hearted. It is empty if you do not apply it. So today there must be something that you come out from, from this service with and say, this is what I am going to apply. Or I am going to apply the whole of this. That way, you, it, the word of God will be able to make you wise. The word of God will be able to do what? To make you wise. For salvation, through faith in Jesus Christ. Then we come to where I was, I, I, I was going to. All scriptures is god breathed it is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Again, every scripture is the breath of God. Every scripture is the spirit of God. Every scripture has been inspired by God himself. The work of the Holy Spirit is to inspire scriptures. And therefore, we need to understand that you cannot understand the scriptures without the Spirit of God. Jesus talking to Nicodemus saying that fresh gives birth to fresh, but the Spirit gives birth to, to the Spirit. So for any of us to be able to understand the Word of God, they need the Holy Spirit. Because the word of God. There are people who read this book like a novel in their, in their library. They use it as a reference. But there are people who when they get this book, 
they get empowered, they get inspired, they get connected. And we are told what the scriptures are able to do to you. And we need to keep asking ourselves, is the usefulness of the scripture coming to me? Am I being taught from the scripture? Am I being rebuked by the scriptures? Am I being corrected by the scripture? Because many of us are in error. We need to ask ourselves, am I being trained by the scriptures in righteousness? One is the what are the scriptures doing to you? And you know, when you understand these are the, this is the value of the scriptures, then the scriptures become so dear to you. All scripture is God's breath. And it is useful. My prayer is that each and every one of us present today will get the usefulness, will get the benefits of the scriptures every time they encounter them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Again, I want to say this. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand the scripture. So that they are the work of the, of the scripture. And I want us, as we enter into prayer this morning, you want to ask the Holy Spirit to come again to you, to help you in understanding the scripture. To help you in understanding why am I singing. <laughs> to help you in correction where you are in error. It's a lot of wisdom when you use the scriptures to correct you. It's a lot of wisdom when you use the scriptures to rebuke you. Hallelujah. Because there are some things that you are doing you ought not to be doing. There are some things that you are saying that you ought not to be saying. But you cannot stop until you read the scriptures. And the scriptures will rebuke you. You must open your heart to the scriptures because it is the breath of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Holy Spirit teaches us to interpret the word of God. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to read verse 9. However, it is written, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things, and, and let me come again, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These things, these are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows the person's God except their own Spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit helps you to understand. You cannot read the Word of God, which is Spirit bread, and understand if the Holy Spirit does not help you. He searches all things, even the deep things of there are people who will take the scripture and they open them for you. Because that's what, if you remember, that's what Philippians started doing. The Bible says he started opening the scripture. When Jesus met the two people that were, were going to Emmaus, what did he do? He started opening the scripture for them. And the Bible says when the scriptures were being opened for them, they felt like there was fire that was burning within them. Later they were discussing about it. We are not our heart burning within ourselves as we reason to him. After that, the bread was broken and their eyes were open. Again, the word of God is the bread of life. One of the things that we should expect when we receive the Holy, uh, Holy Communion is that our eyes of understanding will be open. Yes, but also we need to understand. That when the word of God is being spoken to us, it needs to start burning within us. If that is not happening, we are not connected yet. Hallelujah. 
And I want to say this, there are people with a testimony, but they are like these bugs. If they do not have power, you try to put on the switch, it does not work. So there is this burning. There is this burning. You don't need to be pushed into the things of God when you have an understanding body. Nobody needs to study and tell you why, why are you not singing? No, 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 no. You are already burning because there is a deep understanding that you have about the scriptures. May this burning happen to us right now in Jesus' name, even as I speak. Hallelujah. The word of God was so powerful when Peter was talking in Cornelius' home. You remember the story. The Bible says that he was speaking. Even when he had not prayed for them, the Holy Spirit came to back up the word of God. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray for that level. When the word of God has been spoken, let the heaven open. Let people be filled. Let there be a conviction that will come upon us because the Holy Spirit is present. And that is why we are spending time. We are calling upon the worship team, come early. Come early and, and, and prepare the ground for us. And they are doing that very briefly. It's wise to, to, to meet them. It's wise to, 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 to join them early from, from 8 that. They come, they pray, they, they worship in spirit. Because we remember, you must worship in spirit and in truth. Not just with physical energy, it must be done in the spirit. And in truth, because God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit. And they must worship him in the, in the truth. So the Holy Spirit helps us to understand, to search, and understand the deep things of the word of God. May that be your portion from today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we cannot understand the Holy Scriptures just by our own mind. We need the Holy Spirit during our Bible study during our quiet time, during the preaching of the word of God, we need the Holy Spirit. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to our meeting today in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Spirit guides us. He does what? He guides us. Romans chapter 8, verses 14. Romans is in between Corinthians and Acts. Romans 8, verse 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And you, and by Him, we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. Hallelujah. For the Spirit leads us. And as many as are led by the Spirit, they are suffering. The only way you will know, you are not being read by your own mind. You are not being read by politicians. You are not being read by canality. You are led by the Spirit. That's the only way you know that you are a son of God. You need to know that you have the Spirit. And this is one of the testimonies that we must continue having. Are being filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And if you feel you have not yet filled with the Holy Spirit again, like we did last Sunday, it is time for you to open your heart to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gift is going to transform your ministry, it's going to transform your mouth, it's going to transform the way you see things. You see things very differently. Actually, as we say, out of your very sharp rivers of living water. In other words, you will be giving other people life. My wife kept testifying that when she's working, sometimes the people at workplace are so harassed when she's not there. But anytime she is allowed, things are under control. Not because she is allowed, but there's somebody who is cunning and he knows that things are under control. One is a super How I pray that that will happen. That when, when, when you are not in church, people can actually feel the impact. 
But my prayer also is that all of us will be so fearful of the Holy Spirit, we go affecting life outside there. I was with somebody here, we had a meeting, I usually come on Tuesday and I meet people, those who are by them. And uh, after we talked, we had not prayed. He told me, my heart is healed. We were just sharing. And, she, uh, and he said, my heart has been filled. I feel there is something that was empty that has been filled by the words that we have shared together. This is what our agenda should be. Your words are like the leaves of a healing tree. In Jesus' name. Amen. May that happen to all of us. Of course, if you want to look more on how the Holy Spirit guides, you can read Galatians 5, verse 16. But believers are also led by the Holy Spirit. You can read Acts 8, and that one I, I want to read. Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Eight verse twenty nine. Let me start reading for verse twenty six because I hope this one will be the last one. I'll read. We read the, re the rest next time. Now a nature of the Lord said to Philip, "Go south to the road." We, I had referred to this scripture. Now you know where it is. The Philip, Philip, and the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian. The Lord, the, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kadek, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, was sitting in his study, reading the book of Prophet Isaiah. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Philip is experiencing two different ministries here. One is the ministry of angels, and the other one is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And it's therefore clear that the, the coming of the Holy Spirit did not dispart the ministry of angels. The ministry of angels is required and is still available for us in Jesus' name. The other one is that the Holy Spirit, both of them are doing the same thing. The Holy Spirit now guided him and told him, go to that chariot and start near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of the scripture the eunuch was reading. Like, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb brought to the shearer, he said it, so he did not open his mouth. And then he continued uh, asking him, do you understand what you are reading? And then you can read for yourself the rest of the story. But the emphasis this morning and my point here is the Holy Spirit will guide you. He will guide you even to whom you need to go to speak to and where they are. Hallelujah. May the Holy Spirit guide us in Jesus' name. And I pray that there is a desire that each and every one of us is having in their heart to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit anoints the believer. He releases enabling power and sets aside believers for the work of the Lord. 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, verses 27. The Holy Spirit also sanctifies the believer. He sets apart for a particular use. 1 Peter 1. To be sanctified is to be set apart for a particular use. So it is the Holy Spirit who will sanctify you for the calling that he has given you in your life. He will set you apart when he comes upon you. The Holy Spirit provides fruits to the believer. All these things we'll continue learning, but right now I would want us to start, as I welcome the leader of service, I would want us to start and welcome again to this service, the Holy Spirit, welcome again to our life, 
ask the Holy Spirit to come to your life and ask him for all these benefits, for all these benefits that he, he promises us, he says that we shall receive the Holy Spirit. May that be our portion. May we receive the Holy Spirit. May we receive the Holy Spirit. Why don't you open your mouth and ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you where you need him. You need him as you listen to the word of God today. You need him as you worship. You need him as you praise. You need him. You need him. We need him as a church because as we have said, the, Holy, the church that does not depend with the Holy Spirit on the Holy Spirit is a dead church. We don't want to be counted among them. He's the one who gives us the, the life. He's the life-giving spirit. May the word that I speak to you be spirit and life, because that's what Jesus said concerning his word. The word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So we are asking God, let the songs that we'll be singing today, let them be life-giving songs. Let the words that we hear today, let them be life-giving words. Pray, because this should raise your expectation today. Even as you spend time in the sanctuary, this will raise your expectation about uh, where you are as far as worship and praise is concerned.